Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Welcome to today's Mark Making Workshop, Making an Impression. I am a guest artist here today. My name is Shanna Chang and I go by She and Her. I am a printmaker and artist working in silk screen printing. As a printmaker, I often play with transparent images through stamps or stencils. So today's question is, what is mark making? What are ways we can create a mark? What kind of objects can we use to create different marks? Is it a dent on a piece of Play-Doh? Or is it a crease on a folded piece of paper? Can it be a line I just drew from a marker? Do these items count as a mark? The dent is a mark. That crease I folded also counts as a mark. Those lines are also considered marks. These are all marks or impressions. I just made three different marks. So what type of impressions can you create? What kind of marks can you come up with? Can I create a pattern? We will be exploring how different objects can create a mark. But first, we need our materials. I have a lint roller here. If you don't have one, we can always use tape. Then we'll need clay or Play-Doh. We will be rolling items on the clay with our rolling pin. Next, we will need a small paintbrush it can be a flat brush or a round brush, and then your acrylic paint. I chose a light gray and a dark blue for contrast. Then we will need towel or felt. This will be going underneath our paper. The paper can be regular printing paper, cardstock, whatever scrap paper you can find, any of those work. If you don't have a rolling pin, a non-handle cup, or even your hands work, we have such handy tools we can work with. Then our scrap materials, we will be needing them to experiment and play with. I have embroidered paper, plastic mesh piece, some fake leaves. We will be playing with some strings and rope. I have a curly string, leather string, and some leather twine. We have some items from the outdoors Make sure you have your parents' permission first to gather some plant materials. 
I got various plants and feathers. There are helicopter seeds, which turns into a maple tree. Some random branches that have broken off and wheat grass. You will need a pair of scissors. When handling sharp objects, have your guiding with you. Our lint roll alternative is tape. I got clear tape you can use instead, or some masking tape works as well. When things get messy, have a glass of water with you to clean your brushes and scrap materials. Have a garbage can with you to dispose of materials at the end. I have a tray with me in place of a garbage can. Let's not forget. I have a collection of plastic beads, some buttons, and sequins. You can find all of these items in your home. Now that we have gathered our materials, let's get started with our mark making workshop. I have rolled out some clay beforehand. Here's my rolling pin. I'm going to be rolling the clay out some more to create a nice smooth surface. So first we're going to try working with some beads, buttons and sequins. I'm just placing them randomly in no particular order. It'll make a quite interesting pattern. So let's get started rolling. I'm going to roll it away from me. So what if I rolled it towards me this time? You'll begin to see that some shapes have formed. Some have overlapped here. But do you see a pattern from the marks you created? Let's try it again, but this time on paper. I have put the belt down underneath my paper this will help pick up some of the texture you see from the lint roller. I'm going to take my flat paintbrush and then I'm going to dip my paintbrush in my paint. I have placed a tray underneath just in case any of the paint drips. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the buttons on my lint roller. So I'm going to lightly press down as I roll it across my paper. First away from me and then I will try roll it towards me. You'll see it is hard to see the marks and the shapes you'll see down here. So I'm going to put another layer of felt underneath and these two layers will help the roller sink into the paper more. So I'm going to grab another piece of paper and try again. I'm going to add some more paint. And then I'm going to roll it a second and third time. Do you see the buttons and the shapes more now? 
I can start seeing the details of my marks. I'm going to start peeling the sheet off my roller. But first, I'm going to clean my hands with a towel to wash off the paint residue. Let's try it again with a new batch. I'm going to knead the clay and start to spread it out in a flat surface. If your arms get too tired, use a roller like I did here. It will help distribute the pressure more. So I'm going to continue peeling off that sheet off my lint roller so I can have a nice new sheet to work with. Now let's try working with paper materials. What do you think it will look like once it's rolled on clay and then on paper? Will it be different than what we used for feed and sequence? So I'm going to try two different pieces. The first that you saw there is my embroidered piece of paper, and then I'm going to try cutting a piece of some mesh plastic. Make sure it's secured on tightly this time. And let's try pushing it down a bit more. I'm going to apply a bit more pressure as I roll it into my clay. Can you see the impressions? It's not very obvious. So I'm going to go ahead and try rolling it again. So what if we applied even more pressure? You can start seeing the shapes and those dotted marks more clearly now. How will it look like on paper? I'm going to clean my brush and go ahead and dry it. I'm going to try using a light gray paint color this time. It doesn't need to be painted neatly. I'm just going to go ahead and paint it all over. Do you see the pattern is shortened more now on paper? More so than compared to clay. Now what if I use blue paint instead? Now can you see the texture? It's more obvious now. You can see the more distinct marks compared to those beads. I'm going to peel off the lint roller. And then I'm going to go ahead and knead the clay again.
This time we'll be playing with strings. Here I'm going to play with some leather twine. I'm going to wrap it around my lint roller. You can wrap it in any direction you'd like. Feel free to play with two different strings. They'll bring out two different textures and then we'll start to see how they look like once rolled. We got some lines across the clay. So I'm going to flip it over. And if you don't have a lint roller, we have other alternatives. I'm placing the strip and beads sporadically across the clay. Take your rolling pin or your cup and start rolling on top. Because of the pressure from the rolling pin, you'll start to see a deeper imprint. Do you see the details of the button shape? Can you tell that they are beads? What about the texture from the strips? Now, what if we rolled the strings on paper? Once again, I'm painting it in no particular direction. I'm just having fun with it. Oh, it fell off. That's okay, some pieces won't stick. I'm going to start rolling it back and forth. Does this pattern remind you of anything? What does it look like to you? It looks like an ocean to me. So I'm going to be creative and fill in my blanks. What did you see in yours? Some marks can inspire an image. One more piece to go. So I'm going to roll out once again and then throw away some scrap materials and set it aside. With the pieces you found from your recent outdoor scavenger, what did you find? I'm going to play around with it. Here I have my seeds. Do you think it'll be much different from the beads or the strings we played around with? Try playing around with different textures.
So let's get to rolling. There's lots of details I'm seeing here. Do you see those marks? But what if I tried rolling it without my lint roller? My beads created a deeper impression in the clay. Will it be the same with this one? So I got my trusty rolling pin here. These plants are very delicate. So I'm going to peel it very carefully here. Do you see the details more here? It looks almost identical to the plants I just printed. I'm going to continue painting and printing. I chose a darker color so the texture can pop out more once I roll it on my paper. Perhaps I can try painting directly onto my little plant seed here. You'll notice the paint is much more heavy in comparison. If you don't have a lint roller, or rolling pin. Take your clear tape and wrap it around your hand. Make sure it's nice and secure. This time I'm going to randomly place an assortment of beads, sequins, and buttons. Make sure the sticky part of the tape is on the outside. So let's roll and pat. You will notice it's easier using your hands. Do you see the marks you've created?
What about with painting? I'm gonna go ahead and print. You'll see I have created circular and line marks. What image do you see? Draw and start connecting the dots. I'm going to draw what I see. For this inspirational moment, I decided to draw from what's around me. I filled in the missing blanks and started drawing what I see. And I just so happen to have a cherry blossom branch with me here today. So what did we learn today? I learned that the more pressure I apply to a material, the deeper the mark. Some objects have more interesting texture than others. The plants also have more details. Some surfaces pick up the objects better than others, and some create better shapes. Different materials come in various shapes and sizes. We can create different patterns, nothing is the same twice. So what did you create today? What kind of marks did you use? What should we try for next time? I will try a different object that can hug the roller better. Maybe fabric with lots of textures and holes. Maybe there are other ways into creating similar patterns. We can use different tools other than a roller. Maybe we can try a different surface to roll on, maybe sand. This is the end of our mark making workshop. Don't forget to recycle and dispose of your garbage. Thank you for exploring mark making with me today and I hope you can continue to experiment, play around and try new things.